Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Jessie and this is the Knit Up and Die podcast, episode 51. Here comes 2018. As always, I'm going to start by saying hello and thank you to all of my supporters and uh, viewers and subscribers. You guys are wonderful. Um, I've got my cheat sheet because there's so many of you. Special thanks, of course, goes out to um, Jan, Courtney, Carol, Michelle, Lorraine, Vachon, and as always, love goes out to Teresa. I can't wait to see your hat. Please send me a picture. Um, Leanne, thank you for chatting me up about the sock blanks. That was really interesting, and I look forward to learning more about how you're using them. Um, Evie, David, Donna, thank you, Donna, Betty Ann, Scott, John, Carolyn, Kate, Terry, Mitch, Nancy, and Rachel. I love you guys. Thank you for all of your comments and your support. Uh, always, 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 I'm open to questions and suggestions and ideas and I love working with you guys chatting online through Instagram conversing through emails it's wonderful I that fulfills me I love talking to you guys and reading your comments about my videos just makes my day every time so <laughs> this is a knitting podcast what have I been knitting I finished socks for my husband I'm so excited they fit him Yay! And there's two of them. Uh, these were a real challenge for me. Um, and I, I had to do a lot of math. A lot of math. I'm sorry, I don't have my ball band with me, so I don't remember what the yarn is. There is a project page for these up on Ravelry. These I specifically knit for my husband. And my husband has a different shaped foot than most, where this measurement here on him is outside of the norm. He has a very high arch and because of that this span here is thicker than the average. Um, which made knitting socks for him really a miserable thing because every time I knit him a pair of standard measurement socks he hated them. They didn't fit him. They cut off circulation so they'd be too loose up here on him. He's got skinny skinny little ankles and legs and they'd be so tight down here and nothing made sense. It never made sense. And I sat down with Kate Atherley's book on custom socks, knitting to fit your feet. I'm sorry, I don't remember the title right now. Um, do I have it here? Sorry, I'm looking to see if I have it on my bookshelf. I don't, it must still be out there. Nope, custom socks knit to fit your feet. Let me pull it off the shelf for you. I did put it away. There's her book. And I took a million billion measurements and went through her math and figured out what alterations I needed to make to make socks that fit him. And it was brilliant. Thank you, Kate. Um, just really, really interesting about the range that fits and the range that we generally design for and how to adapt your sock patterns to make them fit for you. And I did and I, I did all of her math and I sorted out what needed to be done and I was able to make a pair of socks that fit him. What else have I been knitting? Well, okay, so the socks are done. He loves them. He's going to wear them. Yay. And I have such a sense of relief that I was able to actually do this and get it to work for him. So, yay. I've been working on my How to Eat an Elephant Blanket. I haven't done a lot of work. Um, my knitting's actually been really limited over the past two weeks since I filmed last. I have a, a bad case of bursitis in my right shoulder and possibly a rotator cuff tear. And it's been causing me a lot of pain. And so I went in and I had a steroid injection. My doctor's wonderful, I really love him. Um, I have been putting that off for entirely too long, years even, because I'm not a big fan of taking a lot of medicines or having uh, f chemicals put in my body, um, but the pain was getting to be too much, and I went in and I talked to him, and we put in a low-grade steroid. I did have some relief from it, but ultimately it's, it's not solving the problem. So I'm going in this week and I'm going to have an MRI and we're going to try and rule out a tear, please. Um, 
and we'll see from there. But when I had the injection, the whole point of my story is, he asked me to take a break, to kind of lay off activities and give my shoulder a rest. And so I didn't knit for almost a full week. Um, I didn't wind yarn. I didn't do any of my beading. I sat on the end of my sofa and I itched quite literally. It really, I, you don't realize how addicted you are until you take it away. Um, it was really hard for me not to knit. But I'm back at it carefully, low grade, and uh, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. We'll get those results and see where we're at. I may need to make some alterations to my technique and uh, try to put more of the movement on my left side, but we'll get there. We'll see. So I got three squares done on my how to knit an elephant blanket. Um, those of you who are interested in seeing my formula for this, you're welcome to email me. Um, and I'll send you the instructions or you can pop over Ravelry and look at my project page for how to eat an elephant. And all of my formula is right there in my project notes for you. This past week I knit three squares. I put these two on, the purple and the yellow. And then I knit one square for Christmas in a Christmassy colorway. It's left over from my sock uh, yarn blank, as you can tell by the really kinky tail here, <laughs> um, that I recently made socks from. You'll see the finished socks in the last episode. But it was red and green and white and it was Christmas night and I just fell in love with the idea of putting a Christmas square on my blanket. And I didn't like it against, sorry, ah, it's getting big. <laughs> I didn't like it dead against the yellow and the orange up here. So I just went to the other end that I need to work on and I put it on there. And it was Christmas. It's a little special square to remind me. And yay, I'm happy. And it's getting big. I'm really excited. I think I just finished square 159. I think. I don't remember exactly. I As soon as I did it, I posted it up on my Ravelry project page and just to commemorate that I did it Christmas night and how, how far into the blanket I was. I am over... I'm not at 25% yet, I don't think. Ultimately, I want over 500 squares on here, so I got a little ways to go. And I'm trying, <laughs> I'm really trying to get into a consistent habit to knit that on that regularly and get that moving along. But, yeah, shoulder pain, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also working on a pair of socks for myself. Sorry, I'm reaching. I don't have the usual range to move in. I'm working on the Coexist socks. This is a free pattern on Ravelry and it's super fun. So Coexist, let's see if I can flip this around so you can see the front of it, had been a mystery knit along at one point and it is one of these pick your own adventure kinds of things which is super super fun and it's all fandoms. Um, and I, I talked about it a lot on my last episode, so I'm not going to repeat a lot. If you want to know a lot about Coexist, pop on over to episode 50. Um, but so far, I have done the, the cuff in Star Trek. Let's get this up here for you guys. I worked the cuff in the Star Trek pattern. And then I worked the leg. I have to flip so I reference here. The leg I did in the Harry Potter fandom. And I'm down now onto the cuff, uh, not the cuff, uh, the heel. <laughs> I'm working the heel and I'm doing the heel in the Goonies inspired pattern. And I'm enjoying it. Um, the pattern, I, I love the idea of the pick your path. I love that. It, it's been so much fun going through them and deciding which one I want to do. Um, I haven't done socks that weren't kind of straightforward, simple um, vanilla kind of socks in a while. And these are heavy pattern, obviously, you can see, um, that have a lot of twisted and cable stitches in them. Now, I'm a sucker for cable stitches. I love cabling. But I haven't cabled on a size 2 in a long, long time. And 
a lot of the stitches are either single stitch twists, uh, where there's one and one and you need to change your order, or they're two and one. And it's been a little fiddly for me. <laughs> it took some getting used to. I keep dropping this. This is crazy today. Um, so I, I'm, I'm getting back into the groove. About the third repeat through the leg, though, I was seriously questioning my sand. <laughs> I love them. I think they're beautiful. I think they're well worth the effort. I, you know, even just seeing them on the camera here when I hold them up for you, I'm even more in love with them. I, I, I think they're beautiful. I'm, I'm really excited to have them done. There's the side of the leg. I think it's just gorgeous. Um, year 2018 is going to be, like I've said in the past, the year of the socks. I need to replace a lot of my socks and 2017 is going to end with half a sock and begin with the rest of that pair and I'm excited to do that. I'm really excited to do that. So that's what I'm working on. I also showed you guys last week that I'm working on a sweater that I'm referring to as my memoir project and it's a beautiful beautiful pattern called Venetian Dreams um, Venetian Dream, forgive me, by Josie Paquin. I've knit her sweater patterns before and I really like them. I simply haven't worked on that project at all in the past two weeks simply because of my shoulder. It's, it was bothering me too much and I, I really wanted to give that injection time to work and so that's been on the back burner. <laughs> Um, camping, as it were. I have other things that have been camping, unfortunately. Um, I have one project that has been camping for, I think I didn't touch it all of last year, which has me kind of sad. And now that I'm thinking about it, I, I really want to put that on my list of things to do this year, is my fox paws pattern. Um, Mandy Peters, I... Is that right? Zandy, Zandy Peters. Um, I probably still have it wrong. I'm going from memory, forgive me. It's one of her patterns and it uses stacked increases and decreases to create really amazing color work, really beautiful, where you're really only using one color on each row, but because of the way the increases and decreases work, it looks like, it, it looks like you're doing amazing, amazing things. And it is. Her technique is really interesting, doing a whole bunch of increases and then decreases to create hills and valleys. Um, really fascinating, beautiful work. It's pay attention knitting, for sure. And I have it all set aside, my multiple colors that I chose that I think are beautiful and I haven't touched it. So I, I really do need to pull that out and get to work on that. So socks, sweaters, and I want to work on my fox paws this year. Um, also camping have been some patterns um, that are in development that need tech editing, that need testing. I'll get them out to you guys. I know my testers are waiting and I'm sorry. Um, I have on that list the Madly Addicted Cowl, that's that crazy cowl with all that crazy fringe on it, that is knit, um, I think it's knit, bind off, cast on, knit two together, and um, I don't even think there's a yarn over in it. It's, it's a wonderfully simple pattern that has a huge, huge impact. I also have the Bow Truckle hat um, that is a... Uh, cabled hat. Beautiful. I had a problem with my charting. I was able to get with Kate Atherley and she showed me how to correct my charting and that's been a huge help. I just need to get it finalized. And then there's the five hour hat that I showed you guys that I did with the um, DK weight yarn on straight needles using short rows. I haven't named that pattern yet. I have it mostly written up. Again, I need to tech it and I need to get it out to test knitters. Everything's just kind of been on hold. The end of the year for me is always just madness at my work and when I get home from the madness I really just need to sit and do nothing. <laughs> so I haven't been working. I haven't been getting a lot done. Now that the end of the year is past, mostly, 
I'll have more free time and I'll be able to really dig in and get stuff done again and I'm excited about that. And I have time to do more dyeing and more sock blanks and more videos for you guys and that just fills me with all kinds of excited energy because I love to do that. Acquisitions. I got yarn for Christmas. Yay! I love yarn for Christmas. And I got some really, really beautiful yarns. I'm going to share them with you guys. Um, I received a skein of the Allegra in the Agave colorway. Isn't that beautiful? I'm very excited about this. It is a sock yarn. It does have um, wool and uh, it's a 75-25 wool and nylon and it's 445 yards. The colors are so stunning. There's black, there's a deep teal green, there's a beautiful bright purple, there's a pink, there's some baby blues in there, uh, an aquamarine tone. Just, just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love this yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It might be a pair of socks, but it's so fluffy and squishy and wonderful. I think it may have to be something I can wear um, around my neck, all soft and squishy, rather than on my feet, because I'm a little concerned that this might pill up a little bit, and the colors are so beautiful, I want it to be something lasting versus something that in two years I feel like I need to replace. Beautiful, I love this. I also received three gorgeous skeins of virgin wool. It's Shaker yarn. Um, this is all made up at the Shaker Village in Gloucester, Maine. Um, beautiful, beautiful. I love the colors. I love the colors. Aren't these gorgeous together? There's this beautiful periwinkle purple and this warm teal and this lovely sunny yellow. Um, they're actually called Gold Heather. Jade Heather and Lupin. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I've been saying for a long time that, well, no, I haven't been saying. My husband has been saying, you're a knitter, why don't you knit yourself some mittens? I think I have my mittens and a coordinating hat and maybe even a cowl here. I, I've got three skeins. I can do all kinds of stuff with this. This appears to be be, it says four ounces. It doesn't give me a yardage. Four ounces, and I'm guessing that looks to be a worsted weight. It looks to be a worsted weight. I'll have to do wraps per inch and try and sort out what that actually is. But it's beautiful. It's all two ply, it's all virgin wool, and it smells divine. Yes, I'm a wool sniffer. That it just smells divine. It's all lanolin, warm, woolly, happy joy. I, I love it, love it, love it, love it. And the colors are just gorgeous. I love that trio together. I, I have ideas. I have like color work thoughts and I'm very excited. I received a project bag. Is this not the most adorable fabric you have ever seen? They're all little balls of yarn and they all have little labels around them or needles. I, I love them. The little sheep, aren't they cute? Wonderful. It's zippered. It has pretty, pretty lining fabric in it. It's got a broad base on it. I love a good solid base so that it works like a bucket and it stands up. Look at the size of that base. I love it. Stands right up. Oh, you can't see that. Stands right up, has a handle on it, a nice sturdy handle. It's beautiful. I'm so excited. I have so many pairs of socks that I need to knit this year. This is so going to be traveling with me back and forth to work and on my lunch breaks and workhorse. This will be traveling with me a lot. I'm so excited. I get to knit socks all year. I also got a cute little notions. Uh, wallet as it were. Little pouch. It's got pretty fabric inside. It's got little skeins of yarn on the outside and a clasp. Love this. This is going to have all my notions, all my little tools. And I received a knitty gift. This is from my friend Carolyn. She knit me a cowl. I love this thing. I love it. Now, 
Carolyn, don't hate me. I think this is brioche. I could be wrong because it looks so different on the inside than it does on the outside. She has beautiful color striping in here and it is the soft, lovely, warm, delightful gift. I'm knit worthy, I promise. I'm going to wear this to death. I love it. I, it's gone to work repeatedly already and I bet up in Wisconsin it would be wonderful. I'm down in New Mexico and it has been cold, cold, cold here. All the temperatures that are supposed to be up north are all being pushed down here. This has been just wonderful. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And it's so pretty. <coughs> love Yarny Gifts. I love Yarny Gifts. As you can tell, because I'm all giddy and excited. Um, so those are my acquisitions. I didn't actually get anything for myself. Everything was, was gifts. And thank you, everyone, so much. Gold. I, ha I have a checklist, obviously. I'm not really together today. <laughs> As you can tell by my, my tethered camera and my um, piles and disconnect. Goals. I, I have had just a really busy end of year and I haven't been able to do a lot of knitting. And that has uh, really put into perspective to me what knitting projects matter, what knitting projects I want to do, what knitting projects, as the weather gets colder, I really appreciate and I want to have in my life, as well as what projects I want to design and what patterns I want to offer. So I've had a lot of thoughts about that over the past couple weeks. And I've had a lot of desire to really get back on the hat wagon. Um, a lot of different ideas about uh, simple, fun to knit hats that have texture, that have just, uh, I have so many ideas. I have a lot of hat patterns coming up, I think, for you folks. I'm also knitting a ton of socks this year. I hope to develop a couple sock patterns. Um, it occurs to me that I'd like to do another triangular shawl. I really enjoy knitting those. I also like the idea of the three-quarter square shawl. And um, that one's a hard one to explain. Let me grab one to demonstrate what I'm talking about. You've seen me wear this one in the past. It is a pattern that's in development that I have not published yet. I'm sorry. I know there's a couple of you out there that are really not happy with me for not getting this one out. So this is a triangular shawl. But if you add one more wedge to it, you end up with three quarters of a square. And I like casting it on so that there is basically a neck hole and it wraps around you more easily than a regular triangular shawl does. Um, and it's, it's very much like working a triangular shawl except instead of having that chart repeat worked twice to make the triangle, you work it three times. I love the idea of this. I love wearing shawls that are shaped this way. So I definitely want to get this pattern locked down and out to you guys. And I'm thinking about another one that's similar. Um, the same shape, but a different look. Um, so that's, that's in play. I, I've got a lot of ideas about things I want to do. Um, in my goals, in the things that I want to do, I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys, from my subscribers, thank you, about um, the demonstrations that I do and the little lessons that I try to insert on my dyeing techniques or on knitting techniques and how much you appreciate those, how much you really like them. And I've had a number of people come forward and say you should teach. I love teaching and I love teaching anything about knitting or dyeing. I, I, that fulfills me unbelievably. I, that's just, that's a cat's meow. I don't currently have a local yarn store that I have that option at. And I'm not in a position to travel extensively to other yarn stores to be able to do that. However, I have this platform. And this platform is great because anybody, no matter where you are, can key into this 
and you can watch my demonstrations and you can repeat me over and over and over again rather than seeing me in a shop for a couple hours and then trying to remember what we talked about. And I love this. I love this platform. I love doing this for you folks. So I'm trying to find ways to enhance that and to do that more for you. And so I've signed up with Patreon. Patreon is a, um, it's an online membership program that allows you to basically donate or patron me so that I have an influx of regular funding to enable me to buy better equipment, to enable me to take classes, to film these videos, to buy the materials that I need in order to teach these classes without you paying a class fee. It also helps support my regular podcasts and the giveaways and prizes, that sorts of things. Um, the goal of doing Patreon is to end up with enough financial flow that I can film and offer classes to my patrons. With your support, that can happen. Um, it, there's multiple levels available for support. Not everybody's got a lot of money and sharing it or patroning somebody can be difficult for people and I understand that. So I've set it up with multiple levels and every level has a reward of some kind. If you provide me with anything, I'm going to provide you with something. Um, one of my levels is as low as a simple dollar a month and that is huge for me. To have a dollar a month doesn't sound like a lot but that twelve dollars and somebody else's twelve dollars and somebody else's twelve dollars is another skein of yarn, is another hour that I can spend writing a pattern or pay a tech editor to make sure that my patterns are good or it's another light so that I can film properly. Um, that that matters and it matters a lot if you're interested I greatly greatly appreciate your support if it's something you can do wonderful thank you if it's not something that you can do that's fine I still thank you thank you for your comments thank you for your support thank you for everything that you do in guiding what I teach next in suggesting things in just simply saying good job Jess that means a lot to me so that's part of my goals for the next year is to get to a point where I can film lessons for my patrons so that you can take a class with me, a project-based class where here's a pattern, here's the yarn, and here's how to do it, and here's techniques that might be different or new or difficult, and here's an easier way to do them, and here's a project that you love. So that's where we're headed. That's here comes 2018 for sure. That's all I have. I'm going to go and rub some muscle cream into my shoulder and I'm going to sit down and work on my socks so I've got something to talk to you guys about next time. As always, thank you for everything and I'll see you guys next week. Happy knitting. Bye. <laughs>